Celebrity Horoscope, Dr. Stephen Hawking, a video created, directed, and produced by Reverend Dr. Dickie Joe Mullen. In this video, Dr. Mullen will uh, begin by looking at uh, Dr. Hawking's natal chart and discuss the various characteristics that have come through in the birth chart as they relate to his journey through life. This is astrologer Dr. Dickie Joe Mullen in Orlando, Florida with a celebrity horoscope for you today. A really interesting and unusual individual, Stephen Hawking, looking through millions of tiny black holes at the theory of everything. When Dr. Stephen Hawking spoke, it was from a wheelchair and through a computerized voice, yet the entire world listened. The renowned British educator and physicist was born January 8, 1942, in Oxford, England. His 1988 breakthrough publication, A Brief History of Time, From the Big Bang Theory to Black Holes, sold more than a million copies, topping the bestseller list among nonfiction books for over a year. Yet, um, when asked about his purpose, Hawking replied, My goal? It's to have a complete understanding of the universe, why it is, what it is, and why it exists at all. Stephen Hawking's birth chart has a wide Sun-Mercury conjunction in Capricorn in the 12th house. This describes his childhood shyness, his active inner life, and years of increasingly debilitated health. He was stricken with ALS, known as Lou Gehrig's disease to most of us, and this occurred in 1963. Most of the time, a diagnosis with this progressive and incurable condition results in complete paralysis and death within three to five years. Hawking is the only person on the planet who's lived so long with ALS. It was nearly 55 years before he passed away. He became a hero, a poster child, an inspiration to disabled people the world over. His natal Pluto in Leo in the sixth house shows the mystery and intensity of his health challenges as well as describing the masses of people whose lives his illness touched. Pluto relates to mass consciousness, masses of people, and the sixth house is the sector of the horoscope related to health. As is often the case with true genius, Stephen Hawking had a difficult time in his early school years. Remember, Einstein was diagnosed as retarded when he started school. And to be creative in physics, the IQ has to be over 165. And I have tears coming to my eyes, having met some people that had so much difficulty getting through school at all in that um, ability range. Hawking's um, life story is very touching. Astrologically, thinking about it and thinking who he was and what he went through. Um, he had a Saturn-Uranus conjunction in the third house in Taurus. The third house is early school years and Taurus is the sign of the bull. It moves when it's good and ready. He had so much trouble with most schoolwork and such unhappy interactions with his peers. And of course, sports are often a refuge during the early school years. He had trouble with that um, even before he was stricken with ALS. Yet he could immediately grasp complex problems in math and physics. His um, Jupiter in Gemini reveals his great curiosity about the structure, origins, and space-time relationships of the universe. For those of you who haven't read his breakthrough book, read it, and it brings tears to anyone's eyes. It's incredible. Um, this Jupiter, Jupiter's the good luck planet, also influenced 
his later academic success. He took first class honors in physics of all topics at Oxford University and he graduated when he was only 20 years old in 1962 and went on to pursue his postgraduate studies at Cambridge and he earned his doctorate in 1966. He occupied the same chair at the university that Sir Isaac, Physic, uh, Isaac Newton occupied, the physics chair, from 1644 to 1727. Sir Isaac Newton was the father of physics. Just very interesting, the whole environment karmically, because Hawking's talents were recognized and appreciated. He received encouragement and he continued on despite intensifying growing health concerns. If anyone has had any contact with someone with Lou Gehrig's disease, it's heartbreaking to watch the debility um, of the body and the paralysis. And Jupiter in the fourth house describes his favorable family heritage, which I think was helpful in Hawking's um, rising above to a certain extent, the way um, one's life is usually cut off by ALS. His father was a successful physician. Hawking had an affinity for medicine as well as computers and the use of technology. He used this in order to communicate and continuing his teaching and research as described by his Aquarius Ascendant, which often shows really good flair for dealing with technology. Venus in the first house in Aquarius reveals his charisma. Pictures of him show a crippled and nearly immobile body. He looks like a living corpse, to be honest. And yet he was a popular and highly recognizable figure. He traveled a traditional circuit to promote his books in person. We'll take another look at his natal chart and the cover slide will allow astrologers to follow and look at this really interesting and unusual birth chart. Being out and promoting his books in a wheelchair with advanced ALS is just incredible. His Aquarius Ascendant, I think, helped him go um, continue. The Ascendant is our physical self that we project in in the world around us. It shows originality and humanistic concerns. He refused to accept a knighthood um, because there was a protest and a lack of government funding for the sciences, and that was his re the reason he's not Sir Stephen Hawking. He's Dr. Stephen Hawking. Um, he spent most of his life, of course, right around the academic circles in England. He once said that marriage gave his life purpose and the motivation to go on. Believe it or not, he was quite a charmer, a ladies' man, and had various girlfriends and marriages, which I think is just incredible. Um, but then he was a lot smarter than all the rest of us, so what do we expect? Um, he was um, a physicist who was creative, just amazing. The North Node, Moon, and Neptune in his birth chart form a stellum in his seventh house of relationships in Virgo. Virgo relates to health, and many of his girlfriends and wives became caregivers. Chiron in Leo hovers on the seventh house, and his first wife's care of him and their three children are said to have been his pillar of strength. Chiron, of course, is the tiny, almost newly discovered planetoid that relates to the teacher of Achilles, the wise centaur, in mythology and astrology. It's all part of the whole. Mars and Aries in the second house shows a lot of financial tension. Despite his lifelong tenure connection with Cambridge, his family struggled to pay for his care and his various health needs throughout his life. Eventually, his career did become lucrative. He was born with a grand trine in the earth signs of the zodiac, which does show financial security. 
The earth signs involve seven placements in his birth charts in Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. Referencing the work of Albert Einstein, who lived from 1879 to 1955, Hawking offered a view of the origins of the universe with singularity. He was able to produce different astrophysical data supporting the beginning of matter concentrated in a single dense point, work that was begun by Einstein. The most familiar singularity involves the nature of the millions of black holes, forming an original bang, Big Bang theory about 20 billion years ago, marking the origins of the universe. In the 1980s, Hawking's answered Einstein's famous and unanswered unified field of theory. This explains the four major act interactions addressed in modern physics, way beyond me and many of the rest of us. Six retrograde planets in his birth chart, as well as a part of fortune in Libra in the eighth house, point to an esoteric or karmic interpretations of Hawking's chart. And I thought that was interesting considering he lived where and looked, lived when worked with Sir Isaac Newton had 300 years before. And the karmic patterns coming into play point to past life, a reincarnation maybe of, of um, perhaps Isaac Newton with futuristic impacts related to discovery. It's also really interesting that Hawking passed away. He was 77 years old. Seven and seven are a mystical number. We see seven repeated over and over again. The visible planets, the days of the week, and it was also on Albert Einstein's birthday. March 14th, 2018, when Hawking passed away, and I don't know, I think they were waiting for him. Um, Professor Stephen Hawking left a number of quotes about aliens and the universe for the rest of us to ponder. Here they are in honor of this witty and enigmatic genius. He warned that overpopulation and artificial intelligence, robots, should we be fooling with them? Should we be refining them? He thought they posed the greatest threat to the quality or even survival of human life in the future. Overpopulation, well, here in downtown Orlando, many of us could see that in evidence. One of his quotes was, I believe alien life is quite common in the universe, although intelligent life is less so. Some say it has yet to appear on planet Earth. He had a hard time coping with the rest of us. Look up at the stars, look down at your feet. Try to make sense of what you see and wonder about what makes the universe exist. Be curious. Stephen William Hawking, born on January 8, 1942. I used 1026 a.m. Um, in British war time. There's some question about the birth time, but I really feel that that has to be the right one in Oxford, England. And I'll quickly read off the planetary positions for those of you that are serious about astrology and would like to calculate and look at Hawking's chart. Um, his son was 17 Capricorn, 29 minutes in the 12th house. The 12th house relates to isolation and restriction, hospitals, prisons, and he was imprisoned in a way in that body. His moon was 24 degrees Virgo. 15 minutes in the seventh house, it was waning in the disseminating phase. Mercury, the mind, communication, 27 Virgo, 56 minutes again in the twelfth house. His Venus, 20 degrees Aquarius, 46 minutes in the first house. His Mars, 28 Aries, 17 minutes, the second house of money. Jupiter, 12 degrees Gemini, 41 minutes, 4th house retrograde, showing a karmic implica implication. Saturn, 
21 Taurus, 50 minutes, third house, retrograde. His Uranus was 26 Taurus, 39 minutes, in the third house, retrograde, conjunct the fixed star Algol. Um, we have another video about Algol, and the third house was the incredible trouble he had getting through his early school years. Neptune, 29 Virgo, 52 minutes, 7th house retrograde. Pluto, 5 degrees Leo, 6th house retrograde. North Moon Node, 14 Virgo, 58 minutes, 7th house. Chiron, 13 degrees Leo, 8 minutes, 7th house retrograde. Part of Fortune, 18 Libra, 42 minutes, the 8th house of past life and karma, and his ascendant or rising sign, 11 degrees Aquarius, 56 minutes. The sun, moon, and rising sign are always the key points of any birth chart for everybody who's just learning astrology with Hawking's chart and any other charts you might be looking at. Consider the sun, moon, and rising sign. This is Dickie Joe Mullen in Orlando, Florida astrologer 